Hey everyone, in this brief video I will be doing part one of this mini-series called Live Switching Machine Learning Models in Production. We will be using MLflow and FastAPI. Uh, both of them are technologies that are, in my opinion, very mature. MLflow is good to track experiments and FastAPI will be used as a serving layer. Uh, before we get to that, though, we need to go through these three steps. Uh, in this video, I will cover A and B, and in the next video, I will cover C, which is actual, actually the one that we are mostly interested in. But we need to do steps A and B in order to get us going. So step A will be create and register a model to MLflow, and step B will be fetch that model from the registry. And once we are done with this, in, a ne in the next video I will uh, explain how we can kind of switch models using configurations and realize this architecture that uh, still I will explain in the next video. So let's uh, get started with part A and B. The first thing we need to do is to get started with MLflow and start the server. So the first thing that uh, we should do is actually create a Docker container that is running the MLflow server. Before we start and do that, we need to build a Docker image that starts from Python 3.9 Buster. Uh, you can use actually even different tags. Uh, I'm, I'm using this one as I think it's very convenient. Uh, and then we need to install MLflow and Bottle3. Uh, this one will, MLflow, it, it's pretty self-explanatory uh, why we need it, uh, because of the tracking of the uh, machine learning experiments and the model registry feature that we will be using. While Bottle3, Bottle3, sorry, uh, it's going to be used in order for us to communicate with S3-like buckets. In particular, we will be using uh, min.io to, uh, to have that S3 buckets compatibility. Once we have this Docker file set, what we want to do is build our uh, Docker Compose. So I have done it here. Um, let's see how that goes. We have the services, which are basically uh, just two, one being MLflow and the other one being min.io, as I previously mentioned. Let's go through MLflow first. The image is going to be MLflow, which is nothing but what we have built before. We could actually even use the build uh, uh, construct statement uh, directly in the YAML to avoid using a specific image. But uh, in order for us to build that tag, all you need to do is to run something like docker build uh, minus t mlflow dot. So that will build this docker file that we previously have seen and tag it with mlflow. So basically here we are using that mlflow that we built previously. Then we have our ports. This means that we are kind of targeting port 5000 and we are exposing port 5000. Then we have a bunch of environment variables. These are mostly needed for MLflow to be able to communicate with min.io. Um, so we have the AWS access key ID and the AWS secret access key. Of course, here I put test, 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 but it's basically random uh, stuff. Uh, of course, you can put whatever you deem uh, uh, necessary here. Uh, the MLflow S3 endpoint URL, be very careful that you need to have this min.io uh, here because I named this one min.io. If I were to name this min.io x for some reason, make sure that you put an x at the end here as well because of course here you're targeting that specific container um, because they will be in the same Docker network. Um, after that, we have our entry point. So what did I do here is uh, is uh, bash minus C, start the MLflow server and specify the backend store URI that I am just defaulting to SQLite. Um, 
you can use different solutions as well. MLflow uh, provides a different. I would just go with a very simple approach with SQLite right now. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to use that for production, but still, I feel SQLite it's it is a robust uh, it is a robust product. After that, uh, what I have added here is the default artifact route, uh, which I have specified to be MLflow. Uh, this is an S3 bucket or an S3-like bucket. It's not exactly an S3 one. It's the MinIO one. And finally, uh, the host uh, defaulting to 0000. 0, 0, 0. Um, you can have a volumes, volumes mapping if you want to persist. Uh, here I'm having it using file system. You can have named volumes. Uh, I actually started doing named volumes here, but I stopped for some reason. You can just use named volumes if you prefer. Um, then we have the MinIO. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. I don't think we need to go over it. Uh, just be mindful that you need the same uh, root user and password that you previously specified here and here. If you want to have a volume mapping, here I did use a named volume mapping, you can have it. I have created a couple of scripts. The first one is called write model and basically writes the model to MLflow registry and of course also tracks the experiment. So let's go through it really quickly. Um, the first thing that it does, it sets the tracking URI to localhost 5000. You would have to put your actual host of the MLflow server here. If you're hosting locally using Docker Compose, as I previously uh, explained, you can use localhost uh, as well. Then you create your experiment. I am creating my exp3 experiment right here. And then you start the actual run for the given experiment. What am I doing here is uh, first logging a parameter called seed that basically it's just a random integer between zero and 1000. And after that, I am creating a model and initializing it with the seed value that we created. And after that, I'm calling mlflow.pyfunk.log model specifying the name of the model, which is my, uh, my model, and the model that we just created. This model is very, very easy. Actually, it doesn't do anything. Um, th the purpose of this video is not showing data science related uh, uh, model creation, but how we can kind of leverage the, the ML flow to actually serve this model and uh, register and retrieve it. So initializer, constructor, very simple. simple. Um, it calls the, the parent class constructor and initializer. And after that, it sets the seed value equals to seed. And the predict method doesn't do much besides getting the first element of the array that is passed in the model input and returning uh, that guy plus uh, the stringified version of the seed value that we previously had. And we are basically returning the whole thing, the whole string. So once you execute the software, which I didn't actually show you, so let me do it. Uh, you go to write model. Um, one important thing, you have to add a couple of environment variables or nothing is going to work, which are basically the mlflow s3 endpoint URL, the access key ID and the secret access key. These ones are, uh, the first one is the URL of the min.io, which is localhost 9000, uh, refer back to the Docker Compose for the actual URL. Um, this time, please notice that we are not using localhost, but we are, sorry, we are using localhost and not min.io as we previously did, because right now we are outside the Docker network. So we need to point to that specific container. And then we have basically the username and the passwords to access min.io. And uh, yeah, you can create your default run configuration that targets the right model.py. Make sure you use a Python interpreter where you installed MLflow. Uh, to do that, just pip install MLflow bottle tree as we did in the Docker file. Uh, and yeah, after that, you can just uh, run it. So you run right model. 
and hopefully you should have no exceptions. Uh, you see here we have process finished with exit code zero, so we should be okay. Before we go to MLflow, uh, what we need to do though is create a bucket for MLflow in MinIO. So in order for us to do that, just plug in the uh, username and password that we previously created in Docker Compose and go to buckets. Uh, I have already created mine, but I will show you how to create a new one. So you just click create bucket and bucket name, you will write MLflow. I'm just going to stick with uh, example and create bucket. And that is it. Uh, now, if you go to buckets again, you will see I have two buckets, one being MLflow, which of course has some data inside and it's the data from the different uh, experiments that I have run. Um, and we will also see on the MLflow console. So let's go to the MLflow console and go to experiments. Uh, the address is localhost 5000, while the previous one was localhost 9001 for MinIO. So we have a bunch of experiments. The one, the last one is the one that we ran. And as you can see, we have the seed value right here that was logged previously equal to 692. It's just a random int between zero and 1000. And also we have the models uh, column that is filled. Uh, now, for example, I did register a few models before. So you see haha ha one, haha ha two, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have this PyFunk model right here that shows us a different icon because I didn't register this yet. So let's jump into the actual window and you will see that inside, uh, you will see the UID of the run and the actual artifacts that were logged, uh, as well as the source of who actually generated that uh, run. If you go to parameters, we will also see the seed value with 692, but let's jump back to the actual topic at hand and register the model. So as you can see here in the artifacts, we have a bunch of files. The interesting ones are uh, the ML model, which has some uh, information about the Python function itself. And more specifically, what we are interested in is the pickle file, which of course you wouldn't be able to see from the, uh, from the UI, but basically this one is just a serialized version of the class that we generated before. So the, we will, unpickle it upon model retrieval, but MLflow will actually do that uh, for us using cloud pickle. So go to my model and register the model. Select uh, the uh, model you would like to register. We, we will create a new one called hello and we will register it. And then you can click on this little button to go directly to the registry, but for the sake of showing you the whole thing, click on models. And here you will see the two models that I previously registered, one being the haha -ha version four uh, and uh, one being hello version one. So do click on hello and now you will have your version one right here. After that, what you want to do is basically promote this version to a stage that is different from none. So you click on here and you select stage and you will click either transition to staging or transition to production. Let's do staging for now. You can leave this one ticked and click OK. So if you go back to hello now, you will see that you have version one for which the stage is set to staging. If you go to the code, uh, so we go to readmodel.py, this one is quite an interesting piece of code. So what does it do? It basically um, sets the tracking URI to localhost 5000. We have to change the model name to hello. The model version right now, it's not really that that important because we are using the stage so we can just remove this 
Then we have the stage set to staging, and then what we are doing is loading the model using pyfunk. So we're saying mlflow.pyfunk.loadmodel, and notice what we are saying here. We are saying load the model that has name model name, which is hello, and stage stage uh, staging, sorry, which is the one that we specified before. So if we do run this piece of code, you will see, hey, 692. Now, if you remember, the 692 is the seed value that we previously um, created and logged in the MLflow. So once again, what happens is that the model is fetched from the registry, it is loaded, it is this that the pickle file that we saw before, which is the one in the experiments, this one is being deserialized under the hood. We are loading it and then we are predicting using hey, and basically the code that was specified right here is being executed. So let's take all the learnings that we have done so far and try to apply them together. What I want to do here is try to put this model in production. What happens if I run this piece of code? So let's run it and see what, what's going on. We get an exception, which makes sense because it says no version of model with name hello and stage production found. Because as a matter of fact, if we go back to hello, we can see even from here, we have no models that are actually in production. So let's actually promote version one to production. Transition to production and transition existing production to archive. Once we do that and we run our code again, hey, 692. So what we will do now is go back to the right model and create a new experiment. Let's call it my experiment four and run this piece of code. This piece of this piece of code uh, runs with exit code zero, so everything is fine. Go back to MLflow, go to the experiments, click on the just created run. Let's register a new model, select a model, and select hello. This model will be registered as a new version of hello, which makes sense. Go back to models, go to hello. That right now, of course, the production is still v1. And uh, the later version, though, is version 2. So if we run the read model right now, we should still get 692. So let's see if that is the case. And that is indeed the case. Now let's go to version 2 and promote this one to production. Now let's run this again. And we get 916. So what we have seen right now, it's very, very important. It, this means that this piece of code is effectively able to communicate with the MLflow registry and ask for the model that is currently in production. Now, this is very important because it opens up to a very interesting possibility, which is what if instead of a static main, I actually have a web service that is able to serve a, a given model. And basically we switch that model from staging to production, or you know, we just promote another model to production. What will happen is that we need to have a layer that makes sure that all the requests are being correctly served at any point in time. And we can live switch that model. So we can say version one to version two, promote a production and that one will reflect on our serving layer that will actually start predicting using the new model and not the old one. So in the next video, we will see how we can effectively do this. So transition from two files, one writing and one reading to a writer that we will keep as is 
and the reader that is actually a microservice based on fast API that dynamically reads the uh, configurations from the registry and serves the right model.